Hello, my name is Michael Lambert and uh, today I want to talk a little bit about the riots. I want to talk about why they happened and uh, who was really responsible uh, and what we can do, if anything, to make sure they, they don't happen again. I have uh, for some time thought that at some stage we would have some sort of social unrest in this country because I think uh, since we left the EU uh, we have problems with food supplies. We know that later on this year there are going to be problems because our farmers are producing less food than before, partly because they can't get the labour, and also we know that importing food is getting more expensive and more complicated. And so in addition to the problems we already have with food supplies, I think there are going to be a lot more a, a, a lot more problems later in the year and uh, and that's when I thought there would be there would be trouble I never thought for a moment that it would all kick off uh, as it did last Saturday and it all happened rather suddenly and I think what the riots last week and and, and how wide scale they were show us is that uh, there is a great deal of frustration there are an awful lot of very very angry and frustrated people who are prepared to come out onto the streets and riot now those people we saw uh, last week throwing bricks at the police and setting fire to police cars and, and looting shops, they're not people who have any deep philosophical understanding of uh, or, or political understanding. They're not people who have any great uh, political uh, motives or strategies. They're people who are frustrated. They're people at the bottom of society. They're people who are probably poorly educated. They've suffered from austerity. They're all suffering like everybody is with a cost of living crisis. And because they're probably some of the poorer people of the, of, of, uh, of society, they have uh, they're more affected by uh, price increases and so on. And there's probably generally in the sort of areas we saw the rioting and there's probably less opportunity than there used to be and not much of a future. And I think a, an awful lot of frustration. These are incidentally the sort of people who would have uh, uh, who would have followed. Uh, Farage and, and, and they would have believed it when he told them that if we any could leave the EU we'd all be so much better off and uh, and I think you can see how it wouldn't take much for them to be persuaded to go out on the streets and it wouldn't take much for them to be persuaded that it's really Muslims that are causing all the problems because they're coming to this country and they're they're taking all our jobs and they're uh, uh, they're using the National Health Service and they're, uh, they're taking all our houses. Indeed, uh, Farage gave a speech to that effect uh, a few weeks ago, saying that it was uh, because of uh, uh, Muslims that you, you, you couldn't get a school place and you couldn't get to see the doctor and so on. Really inflammatory. And, uh, uh, you know, these are people who read uh, newspapers you know, where, where, where there's a big headline and then, then two or three... Uh, sentences and that's about as far as they go and it's, it's all inflammatory it's, you know, it's all exaggerated and it's so often racist and uh, and, and prejudiced and dishonest mm -hmm. and so you can understand them all pouring out onto the streets and t taking part in these uh, uh, in these riots I, I think a lot of them were uh, were drunk it was said a lot um, when they've appeared in court said that they'd been been drinking and so on and uh, maybe taking drugs well who knows what but nonetheless you can understand I think how young men frustrated without much of a future uh, could see it as a bit of a laugh you know it must have been really quite exhilarating quite exciting quite fun to be part of a riot they, they weren't ever in any danger and because they're not really the brightest of people they wouldn't have realized the danger they were really in that was the danger of being identified and arrested and you know for a lot of them were not even trying to cover their faces up uh, there was the famous scene of the guy coming out of uh, uh, of greg's you know cake shop the, the pie shop with a tray full of uh, uh, pies or whatever i mean probably got 15 quid's worth of pies in his in, in, in his tray and, and for that he's, he's going to get a criminal record might even go to prison uh, and there were a couple of women photographed outside a, a, a shoe shop they, they'd pick they'd stolen uh, uh, three or four pairs of very very cheap uh, imitation plastic uh, crocs you know uh, uh, clogs or whatever they are you know 20 pounds worth or something and yet they were there being photographed and uh, again they'll get a criminal record and I think, I think in a way, the way that the government have handled, they've handled it really, really well, because by being so harsh and by imprisoning so many of them uh, almost immediately, I mean, this week, it, all those who have pleaded guilty, a lot of them have been sent to prison. And, and I think next time there's a riot, next time they're all saying, let's go out and, uh, uh, and set fire to the, uh, uh, the hostel up the road where the uh, uh, asylum seekers are, are living, uh, they're going to start thinking, well, hang on a minute, maybe, maybe it's not such a good idea. I don't, I don't want to 
a criminal record. So I think I think it'll be a huge deterrence. I think the other good thing that came out of all this was seeing so many people uh, coming out and demonstrating against these uh, these uh, uh, these rioters, these racists, and so on. And uh, I think it's also discredited some of the some of the leaders quite a lot, who I want to talk about in a moment. Now, uh, every society, I suppose, has an underclass of people who are not very well educated and people who are the ones who really suffer the most because uh, uh, you know, increases in prices affects them more than every, anybody else and so on, and they suffer more generally. And because they're not uh, bright enough to get better jobs and so on, they're always going to be on the bottom. And these people are always, always the tinder that... Uh, uh, that the racists go after, the politicians and the newspapers and so on. And I just wanted to go through some of the people who I think are responsible for all this, because although although the rioters, of course they're responsible, of course they must be punished as a deterrence more than anything else, but it, 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 they're, not, they're not the ones. It, it, it's the people who fooled them, the people who, who fed them all the racist nonsense. You know, uh, uh, our press is, I mean, it's really, really bad. I mean, we've got one or two good newspapers, but if you look at uh, newspapers like The Express, you know, they've been publishing on uh, social media to, uh, recently, this last few days, lots and lots and lots of front pages from The Daily Express, and the, some of the headlines are so inflammatory and so simplistic. And uh, the sort of people that read The Express, I mean, they read with their fingers and they don't read more than uh, uh, two, two, two or three sentences. And it's so easy to influence some of that sort of stuff and uh, like with the Daily Mail and, and how is it that we have a newspaper like the Daily Mail or for that matter the, the Sun and the Sunday Times and the Times uh, owned by people who pay no tax in this country uh, take take the Mail for example owned by Lord Rothermy who lives in France pays his tax in France the Daily Mail is based in Bermuda does many tax in the UK and yet it has huge influence and they're peddling this racist stuff all the time uh, and, uh, and, and, and creating this antagonism towards a minority which as we know from history is always so so dangerous and then you've got things like you know, GB News I, I mean this is a uh, the so-called news channel full of uh, extremely racist, xenophobic uh, presenters who've been uh, uh, reported to Ofcom, I don't know how many times. I did hear the, the head of Ofcom saying the other day that uh, uh, they are considering possibly at some stage imposing some sort of penalty. But I mean, it's every uh, every few day, every few weeks that they're reported for one thing or another. And uh, they really do stoke, stoke this uh, antagonism towards... Uh, minorities towards foreigners it's also xenophobic and there's even the uh, the BBC I mean a lot of people think uh, the BBC is very biased and I think it so often is I think the fact that uh, uh, Nigel Farage was on question time the second most m m only one other person appeared on Question Time more than Farage. Farage appeared 26 times on Question Time. What a, what a mouthpiece that is. What a, a, an opportunity that is to, to preach your bile to the nation. And I think probably about Question Time, he would never have risen to the top. He would never have... Uh, uh, I mean, Brexit would never have happened. It certainly wouldn't happen without Farage. And even now you find with, uh, with the BBC, you know, if there's a news story, you'll get uh, a government minister or the prime minister will be interviewed. And then they'll have to interview somebody else to give some balance and chances are chances are it'll be somebody from reform you know there are there are 250 uh, members of parliament who are not uh, uh, members of the uh, labor party let's say the tories and the uh, uh, the uh, liberals and the uh, snp and so on Whenever there's someone interviewed to balance what the government has just said, it's Nigel Farage or it's Richard Tice or it's uh, the idiotically Lee, Lee Anderson. And this is not balance. These people get so much, so much attention and yet the BBC is ready to feed them because they're good on television, they're all good on television. And then we've got social media, and uh, it's very difficult to know what you can do, but it was very good to see today that somebody has been uh, imprisoned, uh, um, I can't remember, for two years, I think, for uh, in inciting racial hatred on uh, uh, on social media. And I, I very much hope that that continues, because it's uh, it's such an easy way to spread to spread the, the, this, this racist, xenophobic uh, nonsense. And uh, I, th I think it was, um, it was one person who actually 
started all this uh, this writing off by posting the name of, of a person who was supposed to have, uh, have uh, uh, committed these murders of these little girls and uh, the woman it was she gave the name and uh, uh, of the person a false name and said he'd come on a boat and uh, come across the channel and was an illegal uh, immigrant and so on and it's just so easy for that to spread because this social media is so powerful and now we've got Elon Musk who seems to seems to I don't know what's wrong with him. Uh, um, he seems quite extraordinary. He seems to be having a spat with uh, Keir Starmer. And he said, he I mean, this guy with 180 million followers, he said that civil war in the UK is inevitable. A and again, it's people for their own motives, whatever they may be, stoking up racial prejudice. And uh, uh, amongst their own politicians, I mean... Pretty Patel and uh, Suella Braverman, two children of immigrants, as I always say. Pretty Patel, she said that asylum seekers are often child rapists and murderers. I mean, you can't come up with two, two, two more offensive uh, 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 descriptions of uh, uh, criminals. Child rapists and murderers. She said that as Home Secretary. Suella Braverman said that uh, we were experiencing an, inva an invasion which uh, uh, was an existential challenge for the political and cultural institutions of the West. Uh, she said Islamists are now in charge of, uh, uh, of Britain. She was a, a Home Secretary in the government at that time. Uh, and there's, there's Jenrick. Uh, he says that values and lifestyles uh, threatened of of immigrants uh, threaten social cohesion, and and people who are heard to to, to say Alu Akbar uh, should be arrested. It's like being arrested for, for going on the street and saying praise the Lord. And he's he's uh, second favourite to be uh, uh, the next uh, leader of the Conservative Party. So when you've got all these people stoking this 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 prejudice, you've got Lee Anderson. He says uh, uh, that uh, Islamists have got control of London. They've got control of Khan, the London Mayor. And uh, and then you've got the two worst of all. You've got Tommy Robinson, and you've got. Uh, You've got Nigel Farage. Now, this Tommy Robinson, I, I, I don't understand it. I, I really don't. This boy is just a, or this man is just a, just a really, really unpleasant thug. He's apparently being financed by American uh, far-right groups or individuals. And, uh, I mean, he's got a criminal record as long as your arm. And yet, for some reason or other, there are hundreds of thousands of people who seem to support him and listen to his every word. Listen to this. This is, this is part of his record, his criminal record. In April 2005, he got 12 months plus three months for assaulting a policeman in Luton. In September 2011, he got 12 weeks for headbutting somebody. Uh, in uh, July 2011, he, uh, he, he got 12 months of community and rehabilitation. Re rehabilitation for uh, for butting someone uh, for abusive behaviour. Sorry, in uh, October 2012, he was uh, he was found guilty at Southwark Crown Court of using a false passport, somebody else's passport, to try and get into the US. They actually turned him back, and he got uh, ten months for that, and then he got uh, released with a tag. Apparently, in November uh, 2012, he got 18 months uh, on three counts of conspiracy to commit fraud in mortgage in a mortgage application. He he. Uh, he uh, he got involved in a very complicated case where um, there, there was a boy he libelled and uh, uh, the boy's family sued him and he lost and he uh, damaged 100,000. There was a half a million pounds worth of costs and so on. And uh, he didn't want to pay that. I think he's gone, he declared himself bankrupt. But anyway, there was a hearing concerning that and uh, uh, and then he ran off and uh, disappeared. That's why at the moment he's in... Uh, He's in uh, Cyprus or uh, Greece or somewhere. Uh, I don't know. Um, he, Tommy Robinson, he's uh, he's uh, been permanently banned from Twitter in 2018. Of course, Musk, Elon Musk, who uh, seems to be seems to be a fan of his, he uh, reinstated him in 2023. He's been permanently banned from Facebook and Instagram. Permanently banned from YouTube, or YouTube have restricted his videos. Um, permanently banned from TikTok, uh, uh, and he's also uh, uh, part of a, a, a Russian social media platform called VK. This man is a terrible, terrible man. He's just a just a, a criminal, uh, 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 and he's an absolute racist and uh, uh, xenophobe. And uh, and yet there are all these people who will will follow him. 
and then there's uh, there's Nigel Farage. I mean, he uh, uh, he's probably the worst of all. He's uh, uh, I, I I think there's a possibility he might have gone too far this time. I I, I think uh, in the way that uh, you know, Johnson went too far by uh, uh, with his parties by by cheating everybody. I think. Uh, uh, I think people don't like racist anymore. I don't think people like it uh, uh, you know, when you pick on minorities. I think people see what's happening. And I think Farage, because of his language, you know, I heard him give a speech a, a few weeks ago and he was saying, you know, if you can't get a doctor, it's because of uh, uh, Muslims. If you can't get a house, it's because of Muslims. He was blaming Muslims for, for, for everything. And uh, when this... this uh, uh, Thing happened this week, you know, after the killing and so on. He said that uh, uh, he said that we weren't being told uh, that. Uh, uh, in fact, I've got to hear what he said. He said uh, um, uh, there'd been reports that the suspect was being monitored by the security services, uh, and he said uh, uh, the attack was uh, said by the police to be non-terror. And he said, I just wonder whether the truth is being withheld from us. I don't know the answer to that. I think it's. Uh, fair and legitimate question. In other words, he's immediately saying, yeah, maybe, maybe it is a, a Muslim involved. So, so maybe we should all just sort of get ready to, 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 to attack them and uh, to be antagonistic towards them. It was just sort of generating the suggestion that it's the Muslims that are with the problem. This man has been a xenophobe all his life. There was a, a, a I read the other day, uh, one of his schoolmasters had written a report saying that he was a, a, a he was a fascist. And uh, he said, as, as, as regards to security, he said uh, uh, comments about security services had been referring to posts by prominent folks with a big following, such as Andrew Tate. In other words, when he's called up on this, he says, well, I was... I, I got it from Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate, this man who's, uh, who's currently being... Uh, uh, he's being uh, waiting to go on trial in Romania for for uh, all sorts of terrible things like rape and uh, uh, and uh, uh, forming a gang to sexually exploit women and human trafficking. Uh, and that's the sort of guy that Farage is giving, quoting as a, a source for his uh, his reason to imply that it's, uh, it's Muslims who are involved and uh, yeah, or were involved in the, the, the killing of the little girls. And I think we've got to do something to stop all this. You know, as I said before, it's such a good thing that somebody was uh, actually imprisoned for for inciting inciting uh, uh, racism on uh, uh, on social media. Uh, but I think people like Farage have got to be shut up somehow or other and, and Tate. And I don't think we should be giving them the platform that we're giving them all the time, all the time. You know, I've seen more of Farage on the television being interviewed, I think, in the last two or three weeks than any other politician. Uh, it's just because he's a good performer, and so they get used to just call, I would call Nigel, and he's he's good. But anyway, as I say, I hope, I hope, I think they went too far l l last week with the riots, and I think uh, a lot of people were very shocked. And I think, uh, I, I think it's possible that it'll all fizzle out now with a bit of a bit of luck. But um, <sighs> the silly thing about all this really is that this is all. It's all picking immigrants and uh, asylum seekers as a target to enemy to try and get try and get rid of them. We don't want them here. We don't want them in our country. And you know the Tories did so much to stop immigration and because we left the EU and so many people who used to come here from the EU to, EU to work went home again. So we're short, and then we had to start inviting people from all over the world, particularly from Nigeria and, and, and uh, Bangladesh and India and so on. And so they brought in all these these restrictions about you can't bring your family anymore and you can't uh, you have to earn so much money before you come. And so what is happened and they're very uh, I'm sure they'd be very happy about it, is that uh, applications that have come to this to the UK to work uh, have collapsed and uh, the way down this year and applications come and work in the care or the health uh, uh, service uh, are down 80 percent now we already have huge huge shortages in the health sector but we've now made it really so unattractive or so difficult to come here that people are not coming and uh, the idea that immigrants don't contribute anything, all they do is to come here to take. And as I've said before, and I'll finish with this, you know, if you're coming from a country, especially an asylum seek, if you're escaping from Eritrea, you're escaping from Afghanistan or wherever, you know, it's a huge, huge job. You need 
you need terrific willpower and ambition and uh, and courage and determination to 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 leave your country and travel across right across Europe and get to this country and then put up with all this humiliation of uh, uh, of being kept in these these these, these uh, horrible conditions whilst you wait and you wait and you wait and you wait for a decision which doesn't come. These are people with motivation and determination. These are people we need. And as I said before, in amongst the 100,000 people who've been waiting for a year or more for a decision from the Home Office, there'll be plenty of nurses, plenty of care workers, probably doctors, all sorts of people. But no, the policy of the government has always been just to just make it as difficult. Don't, don't want foreigners here don't want foreigners here and how are we going to manage it in, in, in the care sector when there are people leaving all the time and, and nobody wants to come here and work anymore it's 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 ridiculous you know this uh, this whole thing about immigration and being so hostile to immigration is so ridiculous of course we can't open our borders of course we can't let anybody in of course we have to control immigration but not not be totally opposed to it not not advertise to the world we don't want foreigners here which is what we're doing at the moment anyway that's enough um if you've listened this far thank you very much indeed and uh until next time thank you for listening bye-bye